Hello and welcome to this AE Basics tutorial where we're looking at the operands or the effects that you can apply to shape layers. Now as you can see I've got a single shape layer here, it's a polystyle with no fill and just a stroke. And I want to demonstrate two effects, one extremely simple, the other one a little bit more complex but great fun. So what I want to do is apply these effects not to the layer this time but to the actual polystyle. You can see it's polystyle 2, so I can select polystyle 2, go to add and the first one we're going to apply is Twist. Twist is probably the most simple of all the operands. You open up Twist and it's all about how twisty do you want the item to look. And of course you can have dancing stars, you must have seen this, I don't know, Spongebob, square pants, I don't know, things like that. You can have dancing starfish or dancing shapes, just adding Twist and of course they can get fairly extreme, almost to the point where they look like Sonic the Hedgehog or whatever. Um, but it's also ideal to use with other items in conjunction with other items. I'm going to add a couple and just explain how they might work. It's great to use with, say, round corners. So if I go to add round corners, you'll see that no difference has happened. We've applied round corners and we can open it up and we can start change it. Nothing's happening. And that's because of the rendering order. It's rendering down. Twist is coming first and then round corners, which is not responding. But if we take round corners and shift it above twist, we can actually start to make a difference that's going to be applied to twist. As you can see. And then you can add things like pucker and bloat, which are great fun. So we can add pucker and bloat and we can play around and get some all kinds of weird and wonderful results just by playing with these different bits and pieces. So often these operands really work well together and you can get a better result because you've been playing around with them and you've, you've multiplied them up than if you just use them on their own. So I'm going to get rid of those because we don't really need to use them but I just wanted to demonstrate them. There is one other thing I want to show you in this tutorial and again I'm going to choose the polystar and I'm going to add a really good effect. It is a self animating effect which means that you don't have to do anything. It already animates. As soon as it's applied, hit the space bar and it works. Go to the Add button and go down to Wiggle Paths and open up Wiggle Paths. Already you can see some sort of distortion has taken place. And if I hit the space bar, you'll see that already it is wiggling. And it's wiggling um, at, we can see here, two wiggles per second. Okay, so I'm not going to do all of these controls, but I'm just going to go through the basic ones. So size is simply how big do you want this to be? Do you want it to be absolutely crazy? In which case it will wiggle in the most bizarre but quite fun ways. Or do you want it to be really small and just give you a little bit of effect? I'm just going to open it up a little bit. Um, just before we go to details, points. Do you want it to be spiky or do you want it to be smooth? And you can just smooth out those points and again get some fairly interesting results. I'm going to go back to spiky corner at the moment. And then details, how much do you want? Do you want just a little bit, practically nothing, or do you want it to go absolutely mad, in which you can have all kinds of different wiggles and different bits and pieces showing. So that's to do with the detail. I'm going to turn that back to something that's half decent. And then you've got wiggles per second, well you could take that right up if you wanted, you know, 12 wiggles per second. You get something that looks like a, almost like a lightning shot, somebody's getting really, really zapped with that. And then you've got things like correlation, temporal phase, spatial phase, random seed. I'm not going to go through all of those, but correlation, if you take correlation right up to 100, it pretty much says do the whole thing as one. And it sort of zooms in and out just almost as one item. When you take correlation right down, all the individual points become, well, individual. And they aren't necessarily linked to each other in the same way. Temporal stands for time. Spatial is space, whereabouts these different things happen. And you can animate around with those to get different looks. I'm not going to go through all of those, but you can play around with those and see the different looks that you can get to give a more advanced or a more active wiggle when you're actually working with your projects. Random seed is basically something we use for a starting point. If you say, I like the way that looks, but do you know what? I wish it started in a different look. Well, you can just change the random seed and you'll see that it starts in a slightly different place. You might turn around and say, you know what? 
that's a much better place to start. You can animate random seed, but often it's just a starting point. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful, that you'll both be using wiggle paths and twist more in your work. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching.